Hey guys, I figured I was gonna get some questions on uh, shock tower deletes. I did a little video of um, doing the one side of the short box build. Uh, I've done this a few times, but anyways, I just thought I'd do a little video on just talking about the shock tower deletes. Um, so for you guys that aren't aware of what I mean, so this is what usually is on top. Um, let's just go over here and look. This is what is usually on top. So go to this side because I got one sitting there. So basically this is usually what it's on top and then your shock is gonna stick through here, right? So if you have compounds or if it's in the way of the turbo, like you get a big turbo on, this is pretty close and they're ugly. So what you can do is instead of having that, you get a shorter shock or depending on whether the truck's lifted, there's a bunch of things to that. But um, for this setup, I'm using half ton coils and a shorter shock, um, which is actually out of a, like a 2010 Duramax, which is the right length for doing what we're doing. Um, and then you put this shock tower delete on. So basically it takes that much height out of the system and you don't have these stuck in the way anymore. So it's a nice clean look. So what I recommend to have for doing it is this stuff. So this is the shock. If you're doing if you're doing the same setup, and I'll eventually I'll link it down below, probably with some shock numbers or what you can use for different shocks, lifts, and whether you're lowering it, keep it stock, all that type of stuff. This is the shock that I'm using, which is basically a little bit lowering, a little bit of a lowering shock kind of idea. Uh, so these are the uh, shock tower deletes that I've had cut. They're made out of quarter inch uh, plate. Nothing super special to them, laser cut, quarter inch plate. Um, obviously you'll have to replace your shocks. Unless you're lifting the truck, then you can use a stock shock with a four inch lift with these because you're taking this much height out of it. And then bolts. Now for you guys that have never had one of these apart, Ollie will go, I'm gonna set the camera up and I'm gonna put this shock in with the shock tower delete um, just to show you quick how to do it and how to take it apart. It's the same kind of idea. But for you guys that have for you guys that have never done it, I figured I'd just show it quick. I gotta put the shock in anyway, so I figured I'll do a short little how-to. Um, and we'll go over here and do that right now. So your normal setup is going to be like this, obviously. Um, now there's no shock there, but pretend there's a shock there. Usually, and the truck being in the way makes it a little bit more complicated as well. But you're going to have down here, see if I can show you guys maybe a little bit better. So down inside here is where the shock goes. And this tab, This tab, actually there's a window in the side here where you can get this to go inside there for putting the shock bolt in. You see that little window right there? I don't know, you might not be able to see it for lack of light, but there's a window right there where you can put this tab in and then it goes inside there. And you can see the nut right there. So you can hold it to get it tight or you know that snug it up and then you don't have to hold it with a wrench or anything that's what the tab is for so if you these are broke they're not that expensive to buy new i just bought all this stuff i would recommend replacing myself i repl i like replacing the bolt and the, the the nut tab personally um so this is 18 mil if you're pulling it off now usually what you'll have to do is you'll have to get your steering just in the right spot this has a different style steering setup and it's not tight yet so disregard that but this is going to be 18 sometimes they are 21 depending on the year of the truck because this setup will work for uh 94 to 2012 anything non-radius arm if it's a radius arm truck they're different so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this anti-seize. Now, oh, I guess I should talk about that first. So if you're pulling these off, usually what I do is I just take the impact gun, zip the old nut off the shock, and then there's gonna be three 15 mil head nuts that you have to take off. There'll be one there, one there, one there. 
pull that off, pull your shock out. Sometimes you will have to monkey around with the shock because the shock actually gets stuck down in there. So sometimes what you have to do is you have to open up the ears a little bit. Um, this one I've already opened up when I had the out, but basically you just have to go in there with a pry bar or a hammer or something and bend them out a little bit. Sometimes you have to do that to get the new shock to go in. But like I said, these ones I've already done, so I don't have to. But I always cover these things in anti-seize. Doesn't matter whether it's copper or nickel, but then they will come out if you need to take them out because these things do like, well, I guess it depends if you're in salt. If you're not in the salt, then probably don't have to worry about it. But being that we are, so put the shock in. Now this is the same process if you're still reusing the old shocks or like the shock towers, I should say. It's the same process um, for you guys that have never changed shocks and you want to, it is a very easy process, other than sometimes the bolts don't want to come out. But I would always recommend that bottom bolt, you want to take that bottom bolt out first um, before you, before you do anything. Because if you don't, you will curse it yourself. So what you're going to do is you get that bolt in there, get your tab nut in there, and then if you don't shove it in too far like I just did, now also too, depending on the shock that you use, sometimes you will have to put a spacer. This one is gonna need a spacer. I don't have the spacers made yet. Um, so in between the shock and the, um, in between the shock, bottom, the bottom eyelet on the shock, it needs a, on this one, it's gonna need a spacer so that you can tighten it down. You can use washers. Um, I prefer to use a, an actual spacer if you can because they're a pain to put in there if you don't have it on a spacer. What I do is I just make up a spacer um, and then I, I weld a piece of welding rod to it so you can hold it down in there to get it in and out. That's how I do it. But just to show you. And so put the shock tower on. There is the two pieces that go on top or that one piece that goes on top. So there is a big one and a small one on these sets. Usually they're the same size if it's a Dodge one. I personally put the bottom one, the big one on the bottom. I don't know which way you're actually supposed to put You're actually supposed to put it, but I figured if I put the big one on the bottom, it will take more abuse because it's on the bottom. That's how I look at it. Put your top one on. Now you're gonna have to tighten that nut, whatever size the nut is, depending on the shock is gonna change the size of the nut, obviously. Um, I shouldn't say obviously, I guess. The, the, every manufacturer has a different size nut that they seem to use. Sometimes it's a 15 mil, sometimes it's 17, sometimes it's three quarters, just depends. So now all you gotta do is, being that the suspension on this thing is loaded, I just gotta shove that down, put the nuts on. And this is way easier with the shock tower delete and obviously no truck in the way. That helps too. So, and that is all it takes. Just have to finish tightening everything down, and you want to put every, you know, torque everything. I tighten, but technically torque. That is all that involved in changing the shock on one of these. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm putting a shock in that already I know fits and all that type of stuff. So, okay, I realize that there is some difference there for me. Um, but for the most part, it is a very easy swap. Like I said, if you were doing a four inch lift on one of these trucks, if you do your shock tower deletes, then you don't have to buy a longer shock. You just use a little sock shock, put the shock tower delete in. Off the rear, you're gonna have to buy longer shocks for it because you're not changing that. And then if you're doing um, a lowering, if you're lowering the truck or keeping it uh, stock, you do have to change shocks, but there's different shocks to run with it. So if you do a little bit of Googling, I will put some part numbers in there. I'm not exactly sure when it'll be, but in the next few months or so, I'll put some part numbers and I will also put a link to these brackets um, or the shock tower deletes in the, on the website, or they'll be on the website. I'll put a link when the website is up. If you guys want to buy them from me, they will be on there. I'm not sure what the price will be just as this moment, but I will, as um, soon as I know, it'll be, I'll link in the description. Anyways, that's all there is on this one. So don't forget, like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments, check out all my other videos. If this is the first video you're watching from me, 
I do have a whole bunch of videos. Check them out. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. And remember, it's not rocket science.